So how did Profibus become so popular and widespread? Initially it wasn't particularly uh, the leading field bus system, but in the early days when it was introduced it was really well thought out. It was developed actually in Germany with money from the German government and they developed the specification using lots of companies uh, with lots of experience and they put in a lot of features that made it very easy to use, made it uh, uh, suitable for multi-vendor uh, environments and very soon it became one of the leading field bus technologies. Later on they extended the specification uh, but always in a very clever way. They did it with complete total backward compatibility. That meant really that old equipment never had to be thrown away. Even though you were changing the specification, it was done in a way that was completely compatible with the old equipment. So the old equipment would work alongside new equipment, but new features came along. One of the new features that came along, which was particularly important, was uh, the process automation uh, option, Profibus PA as it's called. That runs over different wiring, uh, but the basic protocol is the same as uh, the original Profibus DP standard. It meant that you could do process type applications alongside factory automation applications. Um, and that had great advantages for lots of industries. Okay. They call it the hybrid industries, basically, but it's, it's the industries that have got a little bit of process and a little bit of uh, kind of materials handling, manufacturing, that kind of thing. A good example of that is the brewing industry. Process type applications in the form of uh, brewing, uh, but they also have bottling plants and, uh, and packing plants. So they can use the same technology throughout the, the whole plant. The technology was very, very widely supported by a large number of companies. Lots and lots of products became available and there was a snowball effect. In fact, it, it, if you add up all the, the Profibus nodes that have been installed worldwide, it outstrips by far all of the other field buses put together. So it's clearly the dominant field bus uh, around the world. So those people that chose Profibus in the early days were, were very, either very clever or very lucky. <laughs> The, the other developments that have happened enable Profibus to be used in uh, a wide range of applications, high speed servos, functional safety systems where uh, uh, accident prevention is, uh, is important. Uh, all of those areas have been added in a clever, backwardly compatible way. So what is the difference between Profibus PA and DP? There's a difference in wiring. First of all, Profibus DP is based on RS-485 transmission which doesn't carry power over the bus uh, so power is supplied diff uh, separately to the instruments from the bus cable whereas on Profibus PA you get power over the bus it uses what's called Manchester bus powered technology and that enables you to get power and data to and from instruments and devices over the same pair of cables. It was really designed to enter the 4 to 20 milliamp market. That's really what uh, Profibus was about. Okay, Foundation Field Bus has power over the bus. Why not just use Foundation Field Bus? At the physical layer, there's actually no difference whatsoever between Profibus PA and Foundation Field Bus. They both use the same Manchester bus powered uh, specification. The difference is, that Foundation Field Bus is incompatible with any other field bus. Uh, so you always need a gateway through to your control system. Whereas Profibus PA, backward compatibility, they just made it compatible with DP. In fact, it uses the same DP protocol as, as is used in factory automation. It's just the physical wiring that's different. So the interface is very, very simple. It's a simple coupler that connects the uh, Manchester bus powered segments to the main trunk segments, which are DP. The other big uh, difference between Foundation Field Bus and Profibus PA, which is often talked about, is that Foundation Field Bus 
labels control in the field. So your controller can run in your instrument or in your control valve. So you get really device to device communications. The only problem is that actually people don't use it. They don't like that idea generally. They generally prefer to have the controller running in the control room and communicating with devices over the bus, which is actually what Profibus PA does. So Profibus PA is actually a lot simpler to use, in my opinion, and it doesn't have the extra baggage of peer-to-peer -peer communications, uh, which nobody seems to use in practice. There's another important factor in Profibus PA, and that is that the Profibus International Organization have defined a PA profile which describes the way that devices operate, how they communicate with the controllers, uh, how the parameters are organized, how the settings are, uh, are accessed, how the diagnostics work. All of that is very, very well defined. So every PA device is, is actually adhering to that specification. So that means that all your Profibus devices look very similar. It doesn't matter who manufactures them, they all look very similar. You'll find the same parameters in the same places and you can use the same tools to access the information within the PA devices. And that's been really well thought out. Uh, but a lot of users are not that aware of it. Uh, they don't appreciate those differences until they start using it. Then they suddenly say, great, this is wonderful. This makes my life so much simpler. So this compatibility of Profibus PA with the factory automation technology really means that uh, Profibus PA fits into these hybrid industries very, very nicely. It fits in with Profibus DP, it fits in with Ethernet, whereas Foundation Field Bus, you always need a gateway to get through to a higher level communications. They've introduced a high speed Ethernet solution, which works, but it doesn't, you can't do control over that Ethernet. You can only communicate with the Foundation Field Bus devices. Okay. Whereas with Profibus, you can also can control your high speed e equipment on that same DP uh, segment. So it really does make life simpler for the user, Profibus PA. But surely the simplicity of the Profibus protocol gives limitations? Well, I think on the contrary. Um, it's, it's so well thought out and is very capable. I mean, you take a typical temperature transmitter on Profibus PA, that temperature transmitter might have over a hundred different parameters that users can access. Those need to be organized in a good way, in a simple to use way. So what the PA profile does, it defines how those are organized. So it puts certain parameters in certain places, which is common across all instruments. And the number of parameters that are in there are quite extensive. So you can have things like linearization, you can have alarms, filtering, you can have simulation, you can have auto manual transfer, all defined within the profile. So the limitations are actually not there at all. Surely different manufacturers' devices have different features how does this fit in with the Profibus profile? Manufacturers do indeed put extra features in and the PA profile allows for that to happen. But it does it in a manufacturer independent way. So everybody adheres to the basic profile, but on top of that you can add in manufacturer specific features that enable one manufacturer to differentiate their products from another. Do you have any examples of the features that have been added outside of the profile? A very nice example that you see on some differential pressure transmitters is what's called blocked impulse line detection. Using clever electronics in the DP cell, they detect the conditions that would arise if one of the impulse lines gets blocked or maybe both of them get blocked. And 
That enables the manufacturer to put in a feature and provide diagnostics which can detect that condition and give a warning to the operator that the instrument needs some work. Okay. That's not defined in the profile. It's a manufacturer specific feature that's provided by some manufacturers, but it's been added on top of the PA profile. So the standard stuff is organized in the way that the PA profile defines, and then in the manufacturer specific area, there's this extra feature. Another good example of, of a feature that's been added is in ultrasonic and radar level measurement devices. These sometimes have problems with fouling of the radar probe or the ultrasonic transmitter probe or maybe intrusions into the vessel in which you're trying to measure the level. These cause spurious, cause spurious echoes which you really need to know about. And so devices like that often have an echo curve feature which enable you to whilst the device is online they enable you to look at the the actual live echo that the device is getting and you can see if there are any spurious echoes that are occurring and what you can do then is modify the characteristics of the instrument so that it ignores those permanent echoes that will be there because of the pipes or because of uh, other features. It also enables you to detect fouling of the head so that you can do preventive maintenance. Again, those features are outside of the PA profile. They're not defined in there, but they're added on in a manufacturer independent way. Gives you the capability of doing very sophisticated diagnostics and uh, commissioning and maintenance on that device and still keep the basic instrument very very simple. Going back to your point about the hybrid industries it seems that the mining and water industries in Australia have adopted the Profibus protocol wholeheartedly. Why do you think this has happened? Well the water industry has got quite similar requirements to the process industry. It has extensive installations over large areas it has operation in exposed environments and it doesn't really have high speed requirements. So it fits in very nicely. But in addition, there's also quite often mechanical components, screens that need moving and cleaning. So these mechanical processes fit in quite nicely with the Profibus DP. So you can have a, the, a combination of DP and PA to control your water treatment plant, your wastewater treatment plant, um, and even gas recovery. Mining is, uh, again, quite specific requirements. They often have operation in explosive environments. So that needs to be catered for. Profibus PA and DP can both be used in those applications. PA in particular is really good for explosive environments. And again, mining, they have lots of materials handling, conveyor systems. The factory automation side starts to make that look uh, uh, very, very simple. The process automation side for operation in hazardous environments where you've got gas in mines and, uh, and things like that, explosion, ri explosion risks. PA equipment is particularly easy to use in potentially explosive atmospheres. Uh, there's a really nice solution that's available, but also combine that with DP and you can do your higher speed automation for conveyors, uh, materials moving and things like that.